Hi friends. This week, I feel like painting on something. I mean, I always feel like that. But this week, I want to paint on something. I'm not sure what that something is. So let's just get out a bunch of some things and see what happens. We've got these, this, this, these guys, and this thing. I'm gonna start with these. These are ceramic planters in the shape of two R's for rest and relaxation, rainbow raccoons, rude rocket. Obviously, these are my initials. I'm trying to decide how I want to display these together to get a better idea of how I want to paint them. I think I like them best back to back like this. First, I gotta peel these stickers off in the most dangerous looking way possible. Luckily, I put this protective sheet of paper down. Sweet G, I can't watch this anymore. While I was displaying my excellent knife skills, I came up with an idea. Super original idea. Something you've never seen me do before. Yeah, right. I'm gonna do drippy frosting over a waffle cone. I do want these to sort of continue on from one to the other, so I'm matching up the frosting and the cone lines. Speaking of cone lines, I spent an insane amount of time trying to make these all straight, to match from one R to the other, and to wrap around the sides evenly. When it's finally looking somewhat even, I'm erasing the pencil lines a bit so it'll be easier to paint over. The frosting, I'm of course gonna go with pastel hot pink. I've done this before, but I have a legitimate reason to do it this time. And that is because I want to. I'm trying out this neon pink paint from the five below, or it's actually known pink. I think it must be called that because there's known pigment in it. This color is exactly what I wanted and I'm too lazy to mix up the exact color in better paint. So instead, I will spend a couple of hours painting about eight coats on here. Now that that's looking a bit better, I'm gonna paint the waffle cone in. I went in with a little bit too dark of a brown and that paint is completely covering my pencil lines. The paint usually dries kind of transparent, so I'm not too worried. Yeah, nope, can't see a thing. Since the cone now has no lines and I don't wanna spend another 20 minutes tracing them out, I'm just gonna wing it. Other than the uneven widths, these actually look so much better. I swear, I waste so much time on things that don't even end up mattering. But I am going to go ahead and fix up those lines. Since the frosting line is looking a little uneven, I'm going to use this paint marker to even it up. It doesn't actually match, but it's the closest that I could find. And you can only get as close as I let you get, so it doesn't matter too much. Last, I have to add some sprinkles. Actually, just kidding. Last is coloring in the hole in the R's. The hole in the what? I said R's. Two R's. The R and the R. I'm gonna seal these in with satin varnish and here they are done. Next I'm gonna do, not this, this. I've been wanting to paint on a sketchbook for a while now. I really wanted one with a fabric cover, but I couldn't find one anywhere. So I got this one with like a plasticky textured coating. I don't want to paint this area over here by the spine because I think the paint will probably crack and flake off. So I'm going to tape it off first. Then, because I'm not sure how well paint will stick, I'm going to give it a coat of clear gesso. I've had this idea for a while to paint something with an animal cracker pattern. So this seems like the perfect opportunity. Since I want the shapes to be sort of uniform, I'm drawing them out on small pieces of paper first and then I'll use transfer paper to trace them onto the cover. I have a rhino, an elephant, a lion, and a camel. I'm not super worried about details or accuracy because I don't know if you've seen animal crackers, but they're pretty much big blobs. For the background, I'm gonna use this light pink paint that's getting kind of old and chunky. So I really wanted to use it up. I usually can mix in a tiny bit of water or add some new paint in to freshen it up, but after a few too many times of doing that, paint just says, nope, I'm done. That pink paint really makes the original pink color look absolutely disgusting. 
For the cookies themselves, I'm gonna go in with paint markers. Some have pink frosting, some have white frosting, and some are unfrosted. Then it's time for some sprinkles. I'm going for those little ball sprinkles that they usually have, but I'm not sure about it. I probably should have made them bigger or done fewer of them because from far away, it just kind of looks like TV static. For the unfrosted ones, I'm trying to add a little bit of shading and highlights to give them some detail, but I just don't have quite the right colors. So I'm trying to sort of layer a few different ones and you know what, let's just not look too closely. Now I'm gonna remove the tape. And I'm not gonna lie, I was more excited for that than the rest of the project. Look how crisp and pretty that line is. After sealing it all in, here's what it looks like. No, 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 not too close. Now I wanna do this. What is this big block of wood? It's actually a tissue box cover. You slide the bottom out and put your Kleenex box in. This one has a few rough spots and some kind of sharp corners. So I'm gonna sand it first. The idea of a cover for your tissue box is kind of funny to me. Like, it's not like tissue boxes are so disgusting or unsightly that you need to hide them. They're usually in pretty patterns and designs. Maybe it's meant to help match your decor. But when I was young, I used to see these obviously handmade ones in houses that were either like a creepy crocheted doll or sewn together with that cross-stitch plastic that everyone uses for crafts at summer camp. Like, how is that an improvement? This one probably won't be what anyone would call an improvement either because it's about to get real colorful and obnoxious. After sanding and a coat of gesso, I'm going in with the background colors first. I wanted this to be really bright and colorful to match the kind of goofy idea that I had. So I'm starting with yellow at the top. Then I'm gonna tape it up because I want just a yellow stripe. For the majority of the box, I want this pastel -y green. Then I'm gonna do it all again because I want another stripe on the bottom. When I peeled the tape off of the yellow stripe, there was a little bit of bleeding. So on the bottom, I'm using this trick that I've seen in those art hack videos. After I put the tape on, I'm painting over it with the color that's underneath the tape, green in this case. That sort of seals the tape down and then I can go over with the color that I actually want, which is blue. When I peeled the tape off, the line was perfect. I also painted the little escape hatch thing, except that I'm stupid and painted it upside down. So let me just fix that. Okay, now on to the characters. I had this admittedly kind of dumb idea to make all of the characters on the tissue box using tissues. So first we have Olive. Olive is a baby cow and Olive is a little dramatic. She cries over everything, and I mean everything. She stubbed her toe. Someone bumped into her. She doesn't like what's on TV. She has horns and doesn't want them. Okay, okay, I'll fix it. Olive may be a little dramatic, but like I said, she's just a baby. So we can cut her a little slack. Even if you need earplugs to hang out with her, she's still really cute. On the next side, we have Milo. Milo is also a baby, and like all babies, his nose is always running. Is it a cold, or is his brain leaking out of his nose? We'll never know, but at least he's willing to use a tissue. In case it's not clear, because honestly I drew it and I'm still confused, Milo is a cat, not a tiger. And he has a little green ball of yarn with him. Was it originally green, or did it become green after spending a little time around Milo? His boogers. Get it? Next, we have Kiki. Kiki is sneezing because she's allergic to everything. She's allergic to the grass, to the flowers, even her own furry little tail. That carrot that's laying on the ground unmunched? Guess what? She's allergic to it. But she has a pretty good attitude about it just keeps hopping along. Last, we have Gary. What can I say about Gary? He's really happy-go-lucky, but that might be because there's not a lot going on between his horns. Mm -hmm. Gary forgets where he's going when he's halfway there. 
You ask him how he's doing, and he answers with yes. Gary's not even 100% sure of his own name. He'll answer to Larry, Barry, or Mary. But you know what Gary, Larry, Barry, Mary always says? Ignorance is bliss. After all my friends were looking good, I sealed them in with a very careful coat of varnish. And I absolutely love this box. Just can't decide who's my favorite. Olive and Kiki are so cute, but Gary is so adorably brain dead. Sorry, Milo. And that's all I had time to paint this week. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.